Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Paul, and thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh, and you can give me a phone call tonight at 412-575-2600 is the number. We can talk about the Steelers and their preseason opener last night, beating Tampa Bay. The score really doesn't matter, but they won 30-28. to But a lot of good things come out of that game. And, you know, my initial first impression – um, w watching that game, you got to love Devin Bush. I mean, I think that was the big story along with James Washington. Uh, Mason Rudolph had a pretty good game. I had a chance to talk to all those guys on the field after the game was over yesterday. And, uh, you know, I think Mason Rudolph has to feel pretty happy with the way he performed at a 141 quarterback rating, 5 for 8, 91 yards passing, uh, hooked up with his college teammate, a couple times, a couple touchdowns, and, you know, I would imagine if last year is any indication on how things will go with this quarterback rotation, Mason Rudolph would probably get to start here in game two against Kansas City, followed by Josh Dobbs. I don't think Ben Roethlisberger will play until that third game. Uh, but you got to love Devin Bush. You see why the Steelers traded up to get this guy. I mean, Devin White, the other Devin was on the other side, and Devin Bush outperformed him, uh, was head and shoulders above him, and I think he just stole the show. If he did, wasn't making the tackle, he was disrupting the play. You saw 55 running out there all over the place. Uh, right now, he's below Mark Barron on the depth chart, but I think that'll change. Uh, talking to Terrell Edmonds after the game, too, and I don't know if you were watching the sportscast just a few minutes ago, but you heard him talk a little bit about it. I was asking him about uh, Devin Bush and if he felt comfortable calling the defenses, and uh, even Devin Bush said he, he felt comfortable. And, um, you know, this guy's a football guy. Um, he, he's been in that playbook. He knows the plays, and obviously he has the talent. And I think the Steelers hit a home run. I know it's only one game, and I could be wrong, but I think they hit a home run on this pick. Um, I think he's going to be a superstar. He's going to be, uh, you know, obviously he's going to make some rookie mistakes. We all know that. But um, you could just see uh, what he can do and disrupt plays. He almost had a pick six. He should have caught that and ran it. But it would have been uh, a penalty anyway. So, um, you know, I love the way Devin Bush played in yesterday's game. And I think that's... You know, a lot of people probably tuned in to see how he would play. I know I was just wondering what he would do and keeping an eye on 55 the whole time. Uh, but you have to also like what James Washington did yesterday. He really took a big step from his freshman year to his sophomore year with the Steelers um, making catches. I mean, last year he might have dropped some of those balls. This year he's catching everything. And he's making big plays. He went up for that 43-yarder early in the game, if you remember that. Maybe could have had three touchdowns. Uh, they never reviewed the, the one that was called no touchdown. But James said after the game when we talked to him that he got both feet in. So it would have been close. He had white shoes. It was a white sideline. So I don't know if any of the camera angles that we saw um, could have could have told a, a different story. So you have to go with the call in the field, and I think that's why Mike Tomlin did not challenge that play. But um, Devin, uh, James Washington is definitely pushing Dante Moncrief. Now, I thought Dante Moncrief was a lock to be the number two guy, but hey, um, if, if James Washington continues to perform like this in games with the lights on, obviously this is way more than practices at St. Vincent or on the south side. Um, I think James Washington maybe can win that job. That's a job that maybe is up for grabs right now. I would think that Dante Moncrief would be the guy, but he's been hampered by a uh, hand injury. He's only catching with his right hand. He has a dislocated or something wrong with his finger, um, and he hasn't really been practicing much, but he's been going through some drills. So um, I, I'm looking forward to that because Dante Moncrief was my X factor because he never really had a quarterback. He did play with Andrew Luck his first year, his rookie year, and he, he played with him a little bit, but Luck was hurt. Never really had a quarterback outside of like a year and a half uh, when he was in Indianapolis and then played in Jacksonville, which Jacksonville seems to never have a quarterback. Um, so, you know, I was anxious to see that. So, and plus, he's a fast guy, too. He can get down the field, maybe spread, spread out the defense a little bit. Um, but, you know, either one, whoever can get the job done, that's who I want to see over there. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster, he's been a camp phenom. So far, he didn't play yesterday, probably won't play in game two. We'll see. Maybe more of the vets will play in game two. Um, but I, I think Mike Tomlin, you know, if you, if you look at past years, he wants to keep these guys out. He wants to keep them healthy. And I, I don't fault him at all. I think keeping guys healthy is the most important thing right now. You, you don't want to get anyone hurt 
in the preseason. That would be an absolute disaster if that happens. So the Steelers look, knock on wood, pretty good with injury. Joe Hayden, uh, he's walking around. Um, it was a minor foot injury. He should be fine, probably practicing this week. You know, so I don't think there's anything to worry about that. I know everyone was in a panic, Steelers Nation, Steelers fans, when they saw him leaving on a cart the last practice before the first game. But, you know, he basically rode on the cart in the front seat, you know, talked to some fans on the way up, and he rode on the cart just because he didn't, so he didn't have to walk the half a mile to the, the training room uh, to get it looked at. So, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think and, uh, you know, who made good first impressions, lasting impressions, if there's anyone you think is going to make this team. I mean, there, there's a couple receivers, Holton, Jones, um, guys like that that potentially could make this team, and they're only going to keep, I think, six receivers. And I, I personally think that, you know, Rodgers and Switzer are both going to make this team. So those guys, Tevin Jones, could be out, maybe practice squad, um, and then you, you got a guy like Holton who, who was holding this pretty impressive yesterday when given the opportunity, making plays. And, you know, if, it's hard to not keep a guy if he continues to make plays like that. So it, it'll be interesting. The final cuts aren't for a few more weeks. So, um, but it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. So, and we could talk about the Pirates. They blow another game that's seven in a row, and they've had uh, – it's just been an absolute disaster the second half of the season for the Pirates. And, you know, when you look at it, they've won four games since the All-Star break. And this is what a 60 to $7 million payroll gets you. Uh, Major League Baseball has to fix this. Uh, they have to wake up. There's got to be a salary cap, salary floor, because eventually, eventually fans are going to lose interest in Major League Baseball, and they're going to, you know, uh, the, and the NHL might take over. Or, you know, obviously NFL is number one. And, um, you know, I don't want to see 10, 13, 14, 15 years from now that Major League Baseball, because of the way they structure things. I do have an idea, and I'll, I would love to tell you about my idea after this break, but we got to take a break. Um, obviously, we need a salary cap or a salary floor, but you know, if you don't do that, we can fix it another way. And, and I have a crazy idea that potentially could work, and I'd love for you guys to hear it. Back in a couple minutes. 412-575-2600 is the number. We have one phone line open, so give us a call.